thank you everyone for being here. I'm really excited. Um, good afternoon or good morning, wherever you may be. And welcome to our celebration of International Women's Day. Today, we gather to honor and celebrate the incredible women who are driving positive change all around the world. Today's event will be recorded and will be sent to everyone who registered. Please don't worry about that. Um, go ahead and introduce yourselves in the chat. We'd love to hear from you and connect a little bit as a virtual community today. Please do change your name before you do that. Otherwise, it'll get very confusing if there's lots of Jillian Wagner's in the chat. Um, but throughout history, women have been at the forefront of social and economic progress. Their stories inspire us their actions empower us, and their achievements remind us of the unlimited potential that exists within all of us. Today, we are so excited to hear from speakers from three remarkable charities, CARE, Plan International USA, and UNICEF USA, each of whom will share stories of women who are making a difference in their communities and beyond. In addition to our speakers, we're honored to recognize three extraordinary women as our Champions of Change, this exciting award that we're, we're looking forward to sharing. These women who hail from diverse backgrounds and industries have demonstrated a commitment to making a lasting impact in their communities through their work. I'm looking forward for you all to meet them later. Now, as we go ahead and get started, I'd like to ask each of you in the audience to think about a woman in your life who has made an impact that you would like to celebrate this International Women's Day. Is she a relative? Is she a friend? Is she a colleague? Is she a neighbor? Go ahead and think about your own personal champion of change. And I've thrown up a poll. Go ahead and write her name here in the answer box. If you have a couple, that's okay too. It might be hard to pick. I know we know a lot of really incredible, wonderful women in our lives. But go ahead and put in women who've made a difference to you. We're just asking for names at the moment, but if you really want to share a story about a woman who's made a significant impact in your life, please do go ahead and share that in the chat. I would love to see that. If I have a second during the event today, I might also put a story in the chat. Um, I was thinking about who I would nominate and I'm thinking about a high school teacher who really guided me in my early career and my interests and passions in international affairs. Um, of course, my mom has done a lot of really wonderful work, both for our family and in her professional life. Um, so yeah, go ahead and, and think about who you'd like to name as your own champion. I'll give everybody another minute or so to think. Panelists, champions of change, if you'd like to nominate someone as well, you're by, uh, more than welcome to, to participate too. I see we have a hand raised. Um, if you've got any questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat. Um, my colleague Susie, who's running the Global Impact account is more than happy to help. You can also send direct messages. And as one more reminder to anyone who's joined late, we had a weird tech issue. Everybody's getting named my name. So just go ahead and rename yourself in Zoom. It's over to the right, click the three dots and then rename yourself. Um, that way we know who you really are. Okay. I'm seeing those answers come in. Give it one more second and then we'll go ahead and move forward. We're gonna just put all this together for a little community piece at the end of the event. So I'm excited to, to share this with you all. Okay, and then while you're thinking about those answers, uh, one more comment. So today's event is not just about celebrating women, it's about empowering them. And as we listen to these stories and honor these women, let us be inspired to take action in our own lives. I invite you at the end of this event to make a gift to our Women and Girls Fund, which directly benefits organizations like CARE, Plan International, and UNICEF USA. Your contribution will help these organizations continue their vital work in empowering women and girls. So I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. You're more than welcome to continue using the chat. Please do so. And let's go ahead and turn it over to our first speaker today, Emily Janik with CARE. Emily, please come on and, and tell us more about everything that CARE is doing. Hi, my name is Emily Janak. I work on thought leadership and design at CARE. And what that really means is my job is to make sure we're celebrating the stories and the evidence of what changes are possible in the world. And particularly what changes are possible when women are able to take charge and able to do what they want to see happen in the world. You can go to the next slide. 
So CARE works around the globe to save lives, defeat, defeat poverty, and achieve social justice. We've been around since 1945. Um, the CARE package is something you've probably heard of. That's actually us. Um, it started in the wake of World War II, sending CARE packages to ref, uh, refugees in Europe. And since then, it's expanded around the world. Next slide. You can, thanks. So we really think about, you know, now spam in a box is not necessarily what people are looking for. Sometimes we, and that was part of the original care package. Um, it's just always an interesting um, thing to think about what was originally in those care packages. But people interact in very different ways now and there are things they need. Sending boxes of stuff is most often not what people most need or most want in the world. So we really think holistically about what's happening in somebody's life and where do they need support and what are they asking us to do differently? So we focus on things like health, education and work, food and water, crisis response, climate change and gender equality. Those are the areas where we really do the most work and where consistently communities are telling us this is the kind of support. This is where we want to partner with you to make changes in the world. Next slide. So by the numbers, these are our FY20, sorry, 23 numbers. I realize I should have updated that stat to be 23. Uh, so we have about 1,600 projects in 109 countries around the world, working with over 160 million people. Um, and that ranges from 135 million people who are involved in our health programming, uh, 34 million involved in the food and water programming. We have 20 million people who are involved in the gender equality programming. You will notice that those numbers add up to bigger than 166. Sometimes people are involved in more than one program at a time and communities get a chance to say, here's what's most helpful, here's where I want to engage. And so sometimes we see people are tapping into multiple things at the same time. Next slide. So I'm gonna tell you stories of three incredible women who are agents for change in their own context. And for those of you who are aware, Nigel Barker is a photographer. He went to Sierra Leone and took these beautiful photographs of women. So this is the first one, this is a photo from him. Um, and Kajatu is the woman in this gorgeous blue dress. She's a nurse and she didn't start as a nurse. She was always interested in education. She had finished high school. She wasn't able to find the career she was looking for. And she joined a savings group with CARE. So a savings group is 25 women who get together and save just a little bit of money every week. Sometimes that's 50 cents. Sometimes that's 20 cents. Sometimes it's a few dollars. And then together they use that money to cover their household needs, to make loans to each other. And so she started there and she was so impressive and so successful that when the local clinic was looking for another nurse, they specifically went to her and said, we're so impressed by what you've done in the world. We want you to consider nursing. So she is now going back to nursing school. And in the meantime, is also working at this health center. And so she says, we train for the community. It is only for them that we are here. And her focus is this this real commitment to her community and seeing what's going on. And she brings so much joy to her work. So during the ANC, that's when she's checking up with pregnant women to see what's going on. We sing so the pregnant women can dance. She really makes it a party. And she's really beloved, not just by the patients, but by her colleagues. And her supervisor says she has the prospect of growing more than me. She's learning faster and we will continue to encourage and support her. That's the kind of thing that's possible when women can get together in a network. You know, everybody on this call understands that power of the women in your life and being able to work together and feeling supported from your colleagues, from your peers, being able to get together and accomplish something as a group and in that solidarity. That's the kind of work that is possible. And Kajatu is just such a shining example of someone who has said, I know I can be more. I know I can be bigger. I know there can be more change. And I'm going to make sure that that happens. And the support that she gets from an organization like CARE is helping her make those connections, helping her learn how to do the savings in that way, helping her build her businesses. But she is the leader here and on, and we get to support her. And it's an enormous privilege for us to be able to work with women like Kajatu. Next slide. This is Zemzem. She lives in Ethiopia. I got to visit Zemzem last year. And when I say she lives in rural Ethiopia, it's one of those things that's, you know, you fly to Ethiopia, then you fly three more hours inside the country, then you drive for about 12 hours, and then you get to visit Zemzem's house. And you can see her with her mother and her son there in that photo. 
And she has lived through the most extraordinary challenges. Her life has not been easy. She lives in an area that is often um, suffering through conflict. And particularly a few years ago, there was a conflict which meant that Zemzem and her family and actually most of the women in her village had to go flee and live in the forest for a while um, to feel safe because of the conflict that was happening in their space. And so she says, it, but she has come back and the first thing she and her group did, she is also in a savings group. The first thing she and her group did as soon as they could get back to their own homes was to say, okay, now we're going to rebuild. That's what we're going to do. And Zemzem's part of a program where the Ethiopian government has identified these people as some of the poorest people in the community who need the most support. And because of that, that's why they are part of the programming is that they are getting additional support. But she says, now I see what I am capable of, which motivates me. It means I can do more. I want to keep going and keep moving forward. My savings group showed me a path through that crisis, but I am the one who had to take that path. What Zemzem taking that path, what looks like for her is she actually started a business collecting water. So she bought a donkey and every morning she takes the donkey down to the river and fills up water and brings it back to the community and then sells that to people who aren't able to make that journey every day themselves. So she is building a business and providing a service to people in her community at the same time. And that's what she chose to invest in. And she said, not only has that been great for her financially and great for her connections in the community, it's been critical for her family that she said, it's one of the reasons she and her husband have stayed together is because they have a joint goal and they know how to work together to move forward. She says, we'll never go back. We will never be what we were before. We will always go forward. That is what we want to go forward. Women like Zemzem move forward. It's a little bit of support helping them see the path. They take the path. And so how can we do that? How can we find the path together? And how can we support a woman like Zemzem on her journey and, and just celebrate her leadership because she is the one who is leading here? Next slide. So the last story I'm going to tell you, I know that there's lots. Maria Magdalena lives in Honduras and she runs a fish business, a tilapia farm. So they grow fish into bigger fish and then sell them um, to be processed into different kinds of products, um, some of which may end up sold here in the United States. So you may possibly have eaten the fish that she has grown. Um, not all of it is sold internationally, but some of it is. And she's a woman entrepreneur, which is not an easy thing to be in Honduras. And during COVID, her business partner died. And then within a year, they had three hurricanes in a row. Not an easy condition to be in. And Maria Magdalena says, doors are closed to us. We are seen as weak. We are seen as incapable as women is what she means. Society itself has taken care of giving women that reputation. But I think this should be left in the past because women have a lot of strength spiritually. And Maria Magdalena's recommendation for other women in the world, and I think for me too, right, for all of us as women in the world, is fill yourself with hope and with strength and show what you are made of. Do not sit there with your arms crossed. You can be an entrepreneur. And that is the spirit of what we see of these incredible women around the world that we get to work with, that we get to support, that we get to contribute to change in their lives, is they make these changes. They take leadership and they run forward when they have an opportunity to do so. And our job is to help open those doors. Our job is to make sure we don't see them as weak. Our job is to rise to their challenge. If Maria Magdalena can do it, so can we. And how can we join with her and with Zemzem and with Kajat? To and build that network that makes this possible. So I'll stop there, Jillian, over to the next speaker. Thank you so much, Emily. That's wonderful. I really, I appreciate hearing all of these women's stories and um, the connections and yeah, just really appreciate you, you taking the time. So up next, we have Plan International USA. We have Jennifer Trainer and also a special guest who's going to be coming on, which she'll introduce in just a minute. But Jennifer, excited to hear more. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jillian and Global Impact for the opportunity to participate in this important event today. Uh, my name is Jennifer Trainer, and I'm the Chief Strategy Officer at Plan International USA. Next slide, please. This is a quick snapshot of what we do at Plan. Um, we are a children's rights um, and gender equality organization. And in 2023, um, we impacted the lives of 22.2 million girls through over 1,600 uh, projects um, and in over 80 countries around the world. Next slide, please. 
Plan International was founded in 1937 in response to children's needs that came out of the Spanish Civil War. Um, today, Plan, as I mentioned on the previous slide, works in over 80 countries around the world. Next slide, please. But why girls? Why are girls important um, to Plan's mission? Well, decades of experience have told us that uh, really focusing on achieving gender equality is core to realizing human rights for everyone. Um, often adolescent girls and their needs, their unique needs are overlooked in programming that's designed um, to focus on children or women. Um, so we're really honing in on that, that unique segment of the adolescent girls, because truly they are the women of tomorrow, um, which brings it all back to International Women's Day here today. And this is why we must continue to invest in, in these girls um, in, in order to invest in the future um, and in future International Women's Days and the success stories like the ones we're hearing today. Next slide, please. This is Aisha. Um, she is an example of how plans investment in girls and women can really pay off in a big way. Um, Aisha lives in Ghana, and she recently participated in a tile-laying job training program that was offered by PLAN. Um, her family and friends didn't really understand why she was interested in this and the choice she was making. They called it boys' work um, and, and told her things like, this, this job will destroy your beauty and, and spoil your skin. Um, but Aisha persevered, um, and she learned really quickly. Today, she's running her own business um, in tile laying and employing some of those who once were critics of her career decision, ironically. Um, Aisha has trained six young women and three young men, and she says that passing on those skills has been one of the most rewarding uh, pieces of this job. So this is a great example of how the investment in girls, um, it, it has a ripple effect and, and that investment multiplies um, through the generations as, as some of the inspiration and, and skill sets are, are passed on. Next slide, please. So that brings me to the exciting part of our um, our uh, presentation here. So speaking of ripple effects, um, I'm excited to introduce you to Elizabeth, who is another young woman creating change. Elizabeth is 16 years old and from San Diego, and she is a participant in Plans Youth Leadership Academy, which is a year long training program. Elizabeth is the founder and president of the Ground Up Project, which is a student-led humanitarian uh, initiative that focuses on eliminating poverty and hunger in San Diego and internationally. As of jo January 31st, the project had collected and distributed nearly 2,000 pounds of food, clothing, and other items that are critical, that meet critical needs um, for, for people in these challenging situations. But that's not all that Elizabeth's interested in. Um, so I'll let you tell her a little bit more about herself and her accomplishments. Over to you, Elizabeth. Thank you so much, Jen. I am Elizabeth and I attended Plan USA's Youth Leadership Academy in Washington, DC last summer, which empowered me to found the Ground Up Project to help aid people with the high living costs of San Diego, and as well as other humanitarian crises, such as the refugee crisis in Bangladesh and the migrant crisis in the US-Mexico border. In my free time, I like to volunteer at my hospital surgical ICU, and I am also trilingual. I speak English, Spanish, and Mandarin, and I use that ability to be a cultural liaison in the sister cities, San Diego, Kala Society. I am honored to have the privilege of being a panelist here today because it is monumental to have youth in conversations like this because we are the future of humanity. We are going to be this workforce's future doctors, lawyers, teachers, and we may not have a voice elsewhere because we may be seen as too young or too small. And yeah, sure, we may be younger, we may be smaller, but we still have eyes, ears, and a voice. We still see things, we hear things, you remember things. And we want a voice in how things should be run because we are going to be living in that world in like the next five to 10 years. And the future I would want for women and girls is equality, like eliminating the pink tax, a full access to reproductive rights, and a bigger emphasis on reproductive health, such as, you know, expanding maternal leave and family leave, as well as fighting the global stereotypes around women, like the period stigma, and um, like, you know, helping eliminate that double standard with men and women's caretaking responsibilities. 
and also allowing women and girls to have more opportunities such as education and you know, jobs would be an amazing start because for millennia, women's voices have been silenced and we have been barred from such opportunities. And I mean, in America, we did not even have the right to vote until 1920. And even with these obstacles, we have still made amazing leaps and bounds towards the contributions of humanity's progression, such as the windshield wiper by Mary Anderson. It's really important to invest in girls specifically because they provide a unique perspective that hasn't necessarily been tapped into until very, very recently. Because again, women and girls' voices have been silenced until very recently, and we have been barred from education. And in some countries, women and girls are still barred from education. And But being able to have the same opportunities as men do and have had will allow us to have a more diverse workforce with more innovative thinkers. In general, though, women and girls are routinely underestimated. And I feel like now in 2024, it is a better time than ever to break out of that pattern and see our boundless potential for the future of our society, for humanity. When talking about my project specifically, though, my project is hyper-localized in San Diego with occasional donations internationally, if possible, because let me tell you, shipping costs are insane. And, and since I am on the ground, I am in San Diego, I am more sensitive to the people's needs. I see what's going on, and so I can respond effectively. For example, in August 23, during Hurricane Hillary, I increased blanket donations. And since the Ground Up Project has no money involved, the best way to help me out is to just simply spread the word, share my website, share my Instagram, send a donation over. But this isn't about me. This is about all the women and girls who have projects like mine, all the women and girls who have dreams, but may not be able to necessarily achieve them because maybe of discrimination of certain laws. And so simply including us in conversation, simply making sure that we are heard will make a monumental difference to have more influence, to spread our sphere of influence and to be able to progress towards gender equality. Thank you so much. Passing back over to Jen. Wow, thank you, Elizabeth, for those inspiring words. Um, the youth voice is so important at PLAN and something that we really lean into in, in terms of all of our work. And I think that everyone here today probably sees exactly why that's true. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you for inspiring us. Um, and thank you so much to Global Impact for having this important event today. Um, if you want to learn more about PLAN's work, I invite you to check out our blog at planusa.org slash blog. Um, we have a couple, uh, actually five awesome stories of impact and, and the power of investing in girls and women there for you to, to take a look at. So thanks so much and happy International Women's Day. Thanks so much, Jen. And thanks so much, Elizabeth. Oh my gosh, the chat is uh, on fire for you right now. So thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. I really appreciate it. All right, up next, let me get the next slide up here. Okay, UNICEF USA, Karen, we're so excited to hear from you and hear more about what UNICEF is doing around the world. So go ahead and take it away. Yeah, thank you so much for, for having me. That's a that's a tough act to follow. Um, my name is Karen Larson. I serve as manager of global programs here with UNICEF USA. Really delighted to be here commemorating International Women's Day with you all and also highlighting some of UNICEF's work for women and girls around the world, some of which that you'll see portrayed on, on these slides. We can go to the next slide, please. But before we dive into it, just a very quick intro to UNICEF and UNICEF USA. UNICEF, of course, is the Development and Humanitarian Agency of the United Nations with a presence in over 190 countries and territories worldwide. UNICEF is mandated to support children's rights, uh, focusing on the very most vulnerable. And UNICEF USA, on the other hand, is a nonprofit organization based here in the United States uh, that advances the global mission of UNICEF by rallying the American public to support the world's most disadvantaged children Collectively, we fundraise, advocate, educate, and support of UNICEF's global mission for every child. Next slide. So with this in mind, uh, we are really are pursuing a world in which every child is healthy, educated, protected, and respected. And here, you'll see a brief overview of just some of the impact for children, including women and girls, that UNICEF is able to achieve in a typical year. In all of its programming, uh, UNICEF does have an equity approach that ensures that the most marginalized and vulnerable groups are empowered. And by extension of this, promoting the equal rights of girls and women really is so essential to UNICEF's uh, mission and mandate for every child. Next slide. 
And the issue of gender equality, as we've also heard from, from plan and care, continues to be a, a pressing one. Uh, from UNICEF's perspective, it really is in countries where girls are facing these multiple overlapping risks, whether that's conflict or poverty, climate disaster, or other humanitarian emergencies, that the need is the, the most urgent and where we're concerned that this is going to undo progress that we made on gender equality. In this really brief overview though, I, I also wanted to highlight adolescent girls because the rights of adolescent girls and, and young women all over the world are especially at risk. Uh, they continue to face information gaps and restrictions around their choices, particularly in their sexual and reproductive health and rights, but also in other avenues of life, which I think further highlights the importance of prioritizing investments in adolescent girls, especially initiatives that directly center their voice, agency, and uh, leadership. Next slide. And I'll draw some examples from the education space just to really quickly illustrate this, but because for millions, access to education was a challenge even before the pandemic. Uh, nearly one in three adolescent girls from the very poorest households around the world have never been to school at all. And unfortunately, this, uh, these fault lines are only deepening in the wake of the pandemic. For instance, uh, adolescent girls are now twice as likely as boys not to be engaged in any form of employment, education, or training. And then we have digital access and literacy being another challenge that's likely to continue to impact future generations of women and girls. So the right to learn from this perspective truly is a, an important cornerstone that ensures present and future generations of girls are not just surviving, but thriving later in life. Next slide. But despite the many challenges, we also know that with the right investments, the world's 6 million girls uh, can become the largest generation of female leaders and change makers that we've ever seen. So with this in mind, UNICEF's work for and with adolescent girls, importantly, has a number of key priorities. I'll name a few for brevity. This includes ending child marriage and ensuring girls are protected from violence and other harmful practices, also during emergencies, of course. Promoting girls' health and nutrition, including accessible and dignified menstrual health and hygiene services. And then lastly, providing uh, and improving girls with uh, secondary education. And this work also entails ensuring girls have the skills that they need to further their economic empowerment. Next slide. And one of these initiatives aimed specifically at bridging the gender gap is Skills for Girls. And the specific details of how adolescent girls are engaged will vary by context, as you'll see here on screen. And it really is adapted to the unique challenges facing women and girls locally. Next slide. And I wanted to make sure that we hear directly from some of the girls reached by Skills for Girls programs and really hear their perspective on how this is impacting their ability to thrive as visionaries and champions of change, um, giving hope and inspiration, not just for themselves, but also for future generations as well. We can go ahead and play the video. Современный мир — это мир новых технологий и цифровизации. В нем нам, девушкам, приходится сталкиваться со многими стереотипами и барьерами. Skills for Girls is a global UNICEF program that empowers adolescent girls with the skills and confidence that they need to join the 21st century workforce. Và một trong những sáng kiến đó là đưa công nghệ thực tế ảo tăng trường hay còn gọi tắt là AVR vào các lớp học. Đây là một giải pháp tiên tiến để giới thiệu công nghệ AVR nguồn mở ở các trường học vùng sâu, vùng xa. Đamona, nhắn đến bên áp, đưa phụ nữ học tập xa mới là lĩnh vực mà hoạt động sức sĩ. Hai anh hứa bảo sẽ giúp nó em nó nâng tốc độ mình mất hết tốc độ của nó thì mất hết tốc độ của nó. Y por eso he ideado un pequeño prototipo que es el sistema de riego automatizado. Mi Juan no va a pensar que sea casa. A mí se dice a mi moto me era ya le llega por la tarde dice era para que no te quede. A mi moto iba un caso que ni de vaya tarde. Nanja cubre un no me ningún llega. So again, then the very key you could go when did you show boy? The very key moves out with the umwe west a core each or a one nak moro aye. من خلال برنامج تيار جوتي فتيات نحن البنات نصير عاملات تغيير إيجابي في مجتمعنا وطبعا بتصير مصدر إلهام لباقي البنات. девушкам нужно понять то, что у профессии нету гендера и они могут стать кем они захотят. في مكاني صرت أحس إني مثلا كتير وأنا بشعر إني رح أغير مخيم الزعتري مو بس مخيم الزعتري أنا رح أغير العالم كله. 
Investing in skills for adolescents and girls is an investment in a better future for all. So it really is thanks to um, women and girls like 13-year-old Fia from Sudan, who you see on screen here, that we've made some tremendous progress over the last 30 years or so. More girls than ever before enroll and complete their schooling. Child, child marriage rates have uh, declined overall, and adolescent pregnancy has also gone down, with significant progress made in and around HIV as well. And uh, Fia, in many ways, is the perfect example of progress. Uh, she was empowered by her peers and also supportive adults at her local UNICEF youth club, and was able to stand up for herself and manage to put an end to her family's intention to marry her while schools in Sudan remained shut during the recent surge of violence there. And I'm going to put ahead, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, the link to her full story in the chat. There's a really beautiful uh, blog post that was made about her. You can go to the next slide. But I'll leave you on that positive note. Uh, let me just uh, end by saying that UNICEF wouldn't be able to achieve these results with and for girls and young women all over the world without the help of our own community of supporters. So I'm going to challenge you to uh, join our relentless mission to, and ensure that every child is healthy, educated, protected, and respected. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. I really appreciate all of you taking the time to speak with us. This was wonderful. And it just gives us a snapshot into your work, but I think it's more um, connective to just hear these individual stories. So now on to our Champions of Change. So I'm thrilled to introduce uh, our Champions of Change Award. It honors three remarkable women who've demonstrated exceptional dedication and leadership in their efforts to create positive change. So first up, you want to come on screen, we've got Alicia Priscello. She uh, is getting this Champion Change Award for her commitment to corporate social responsibility and community investment over her 25-year career. Currently serving as Vice President of Corporate Social Responsibility for Avery Dennison and President of the Avery Dennison Foundation, Alicia manages life-changing multi-million dollar grants worldwide. Her commitment also extends beyond her professional life. She volunteers for public health advocates and for Volunteers of America, Los Angeles. She's also on the African American Board Leadership Institute and has worked with Southern California grant makers. She's very committed to community engagement. And under her leadership in partnership with Global Impact's Employee Assistance Program, um, the Avery Dennison Foundation really successfully launched a crisis fund to provide crucial support to employees and communities in need. And this actually grew out of the incredible work they did with their COVID fund. Um, that provided support to over 4,000 employees in 30 countries from 2020 to 2023. Um, just this year in their new fund, they've supported 475 employees who were impacted by really devastating flooding in China. Um, she also, uh, in partnership with two uh, actually global impact charities, Action Against Hunger and Islamic Relief USA, um, has made really significant grants to them that really prioritize and trust them to use where the grant dollars are needed most. So Alicia is truly a champion of change, inspiring others to care for one another and support communities in times of need. Thanks so much, Alicia. Thank you, Jillian. And I'm truly honored by this recognition and my thanks to everyone at Global Impact. I'll say that Avery Dennison is a material science company in 54 countries, and I've had the distinct honor of leading the foundation for almost 15 years. Um, and my champions are our female Avery Dennison employees, not only the ones in the U.S., but the ones in many countries where women truly, truly deserve more recognition than they actually receive. We see you. So in their honor, happy International Women's Day. Thank you. Thanks so much, Alicia. Our next champion of change is Annie Rose Chow. Annie, do you want to come on? Perfect. We lost you. We'll give you a second to come back on. Annie Rose Chow is being honored as our champion of change for her exceptional journey and contributions to the hospitality industry. So Annie Rose has actually been uh, with Four Seasons for 15 years. She started her career as an intern at Four Seasons Hotel Sydney and then went on to Four Seasons Hotel Silicon Valley and Four Seasons Resort Maui. Her commitment to learning and development brought her to her current role at Four Seasons Maui, where she now sells in people and culture shaping the company's most valuable asset is people, right? 
Annie Rose's leadership was particularly evident this past year when she fearlessly guided the Four Seasons Maui team through the tragedy of the Maui wildfires. Sorry. She partnered with Global Impact and our Employee Assistance Program work to utilize the Four Seasons Golden Rural Relief Fund, I love that name, to get much needed support to her affected colleagues. Her dedication to ensuring all employees were aware of and could access the fund underscores her commitment to the well being of her team and her efforts provided crucial support to employees through, um, you know, assistance grants, mental health counseling, and other critical aid. Her story is a testament to resilience and empathy. So thanks, Annie. Uh, mahalo. It's truly an honor to accept this on behalf of so many incredible people who have cared for Four Seasons Maui and truly the team here in our community. Um, people like Katrin O'Brien from our Four Seasons corporate team, our fearless general manager, Ben Shank, Joanna Luther, our entire planning committee, and all of our people and culture team. And truly a big, big mahalo to Global Impact that has tirelessly worked with us over the last few months. Um, we obviously still have a long road to recovery here on the islands, but I couldn't be more thankful for all of the love and aloha that we've seen um, from around the globe and our entire sort of extended um, Four Seasons Ohana. So a truly thank you, mahalo, um, we appreciate it. Thanks so much, Annie Rose, we're glad to have you here. All right, and last but not least is Christine Kozak. Christine, do you wanna come on? Christine is the Community Relations Manager at Siege Robinson, another remarkable woman being celebrated as a champion of change today. In her role, Christine leads Robinson Care, Siege Robinson's employee engagement program, driving progress on social impact within the ESG strategy. She also oversees over $4 million in grant making within Siege Robinson's foundation to organizations that are really making a meaningful difference. Christine's previous experience includes strategic positions in philanthropy and social impact at Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies, the Otto Bremer Trust, and Best Buy. Uh, beyond her professional achievements, Christine is deeply involved in the Northeast Minneapolis arts and music community. So wave hi, anybody in the chat who's from the Minneapolis area. And she serves on the board of the Eastside Neighborhood Services. Her commitment to making a positive impact on people, communities, industries, and the planet through charitable donations and program support is truly inspiring. And I've actually had the pleasure of working firsthand with her in a collaborative event we did with C.H. Robinson. We featured C.H. Robinson's Latinx Employee Research Group. We highlighted our End Hunger Fund. We had charity speakers, all of which just made a really big impact on the employees who were able to make it, and as well as the charities who were involved in the event too, was really wonderful. Christine's leadership, uh, particularly her efforts to spearhead engaging and impactful employee engagement opportunities, really showcased her commitment to making a lasting change and inspiring others to make a positive impact on their communities. So thanks so much, Christine. Oh, we're having audio trouble, I can't hear you. Give it a second. At least you don't have like 50 Jillian Wagners in the chat right now. I can't hear you, sorry. Okay, well maybe you wanna shoot a note in the chat and just say hi there. No, it's in the chat. Oh, wait, now Thanks. I can hear you. Okay, all right. Thank you, Jillian. I wanted to thank Global Impact and all the partners on the call today, um, recognizing that we're all extending ourselves with care and concern for girls and women across the globe. For my part, our work is done through the Robinson Cares Network. We have 22 active locations with about 180 employees across the globe who are volunteering and giving and creating ways for employees to engage. Uh, so a shout out to our Robinson Cares Network across the enterprise. I'm so happy to be with you all today and so impressed by the great work that everyone is doing. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay, so now I'm going to test something here. We've already had a few interesting technological events today, so we'll see how this goes. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to take all of our champions of change that we as a group nominated at the beginning of the event. Uh, these were folks that had made an impact in our lives in some way or an impact in our communities. 
and just want to give a chance to to shout them out, right? And and celebrate them together on this International Women's Day. So I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, I think that works. So here are the women that you named as your own champions of change. Um, I see family and mom and friends, but also individuals who are named. And the beauty of this is that I may never meet these women, right? Like I will never see their direct impact, but I can still connect with them knowing that they made a difference for you and in your life. And, and I get overwhelmed thinking about the scale of this because, you know, this is just one event with a small group of people, but all of us know a champion, right? We all have a woman in our life who, who is like this. Um, and I like to think that all of us are champions of change too, right? Um, I think through the, the charity speakers today, as well as our champions of change, you know, we see the difference when empowered women are in our lives and in our communities. So um, it's just nice to see their names up on screen. I'm going to make sure that this is available for everybody. You'll get it in a follow-up email. Um, and again, don't feel uh, shy about putting more names in the chat if you want. Okay. So as we come to a close with our celebration of International Women's Day, I'm filled with gratitude for each of you for joining us today. Um, you know, we've honored and celebrated incredible women, and it's just a really nice opportunity to, to take this moment and, and mark this important observance day. I want to send a heartfelt thank you to our speakers from CARE, Plan International USA, and UNICEF USA for sharing their stories and insights. Elizabeth, in particular, thank you for your remarks. You killed it. Your work is so inspiring, and we're just really grateful for the work that you're making in the lives of women and girls around the world. I want to again congratulate the three remarkable women who have been honored with the Champion of Change Award. Your dedication and passion and commitment is just an inspiration to us all. I said this up at the top of the event, but I'll say it again here. Today's event has been more than just a gathering. It's a call to action. I invite each of you to join us in supporting the Women and Girls Fund, directly benefiting our organizations and really helping them in their vital work. Susie, if you could do me a favor and just drop that link in the chat one more time. As we leave here today, let us carry the spirit of the event with us, right? Let's be inspired by these stories and let us be motivated to take action in our own communities, right? Um, together, we can create a world where, where every woman and every girl has the opportunity to thrive. So thanks so much for being here, everyone. Really appreciate it. Uh, reach out, engage at charity.org if you need anything, have any questions, want to see more of this, have ideas of other events you'd like us to do. Um, but just truly thanks so much for being here today and uh, we'll, we'll see you at our next event. Happy International Women's Day, everyone.